Hello, my name is Andrew Kofink. Today I'm going to show you how to use RSpec's mocking and stubbing feature. I have a simple Rails controller here called Recipes Controller. I want to test the index method. So I'm going to go ahead and make the spec file. I'll put it in spec controllers recipes controller spec.rb. Okay. As always, I want to describe the class recipes controller in a block. And then I want to describe the method that we're testing. In this case, it's an instance method. So I'll be using a hash mark here on index. If this was a class level method, self.index, I would use a period like so. But since it's not, I'll use a hash mark. Okay, and then what are we testing? It and then something, right? Um, what is it doing? So if we look at index, the behavior that I really want to test is that it orders by title. So that's exactly what I'll type here. It orders, well, orders recipes by title. Okay. Now, I have guard running in the background here. So, every time I save this file or this file, it should run the test for that. I think we have an issue here. Oh, right. So, the, the issue here is that I need to require the file. Um, or I can just require the spec helper, which requires all the files in the Rails project for me. So here we should have a pending test. It's pending because I just put it and then a string. Um, without a block, the it method does not um, fail or pass. It just says pending, as you can see here in guard. My status bar also, down here in the left corner, turns yellow when it's pending. Green is passing and red is failing. So we'll go ahead and make this a block and I'll show you what we're testing here. We want to call the index method on the recipes controller. So in order to do that, because it's an instance method, we'll need to instantiate a new recipes controller object. We'll call it recipes controller and we'll go ahead and call index on it. I haven't made this variable yet recipes controller. So in order to do that I will use the let syntax. And I'm going to do it up in this global scope here. Let and then you pass in a symbol recipes controller. The symbol describes the variable that you're um, defining. And then recipes controller dot new should make a new instance of the recipes controller. Basically the advantage of this let syntax is that it will not be run unless you call recipes controller the variable. It's similar to Rails la lazy instantiation. So recipes controller dot new will indeed um, return us a new instance of the recipes controller. I'll show you that here. This is the um, Rails console. Oops. Recipes controller dot new. So you can see that it has some instance uh, parameters in it, instance variables. All right, so here we'll have our instance of recipes controller and we're just calling index. One thing that we need to do is um, we, we don't want to get rid of this line, um, but we also don't really want to test it. So what we're going to do is try to avoid it. Um, you can see that it says if user at the end. So that's a pretty good place to start. Um, user must be getting set somewhere. We can look up here and there are a few before actions um, and it's probably the set user action. When they have a before action like this and a symbol, it usually means that there's a, a method defined set user and indeed there is. Um, we don't care what's in this method because we're not testing it. What we, what we do want to care about is um, that this user is actually nil or a falsy value. That way, when 
it gets executed here, if user, it'll skip this line. So basically what we want to do is stub the set user method. The way that you do that is you simply do recipes controller because it's an instance method on the recipes controller. In fact, it's private. It's a private instance method, but you can still stub it. And then you just call the stub method on recipes controller, which RSpec gives you, and you pass it the symbol uh, set user. Okay? Now, that method will not get executed. It will instead get redirected to this stub and return nil. The second thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that the order method is called on recipe. So in order to do that, we it's similar to a stub, but it's actually an, um, a message expectation. Um, it's very easy to write. All you do is say recipe, which is the um, the class which order is being called on, and you say dot should receive. Receive is um, is in regard to the the message. It should receive, and then you pass it a symbol for a message. In this case, the symbol for our message is order because we're calling recipe dot order. So you just convert that into a symbol, and then we save it. So all this is doing is saying recipe should receive order, and then we're calling index, which is executing this method here. And it will execute the method, and then everything that came before that says should um, will be checked. So it's a validation. Um, it's an assertion, in fact. So if it doesn't receive order, um, it will fail. So we can look. Uh, so far it's passing, one example, zero failures, and I'll go ahead and change this to all instead of order. Okay, and instead of instead of letting it actually execute recipe.all, I'll go ahead and stub it. That way it doesn't actually um, execute. So that's all you have to do is say recipe.stub all. I'll save that and I'll save this. And hopefully when we go look at guard again, we'll see that it will fail. And indeed. So this is very useful information. It says here, recipe should receive order. And then it gives you the, the object. And it says it should receive it with any arguments here and it was expected one time and it was received zero times. So this is a very easy way to test uh, whether methods are called without actually having to test the functionality of the methods which you're calling. This will let you test index without testing all or order for instance. So I'm going to go ahead and make this back to order and I'm going to get rid of the stub for all our test will pass now, um, but I also want to test that it's not only calling order on recipe, but that it's ordering by title. So to do that, you just call, you just continue to um, use the same object that's returned from should receive, and you say width. And this is any arguments that are passed to order. So these are the arguments that have to be passed to order or else the, the test will fail. In this case, we want to order by title, so we're going to say with title. So recipe should receive order with title as parameters, as arguments rather. All right, I'll go ahead and save this and we should be passing, which it looks like we are. And I'll go back here and make sure that our test is actually testing what we think it is. So the other, the other thing that's on recipe is body. There's another um, column on the recipe table. So I'll go ahead and save this. And now we're ordering by the contents in the body of the recipe, not the title. 
and we'll see that our tests are going to fail. Wait for it to execute, and indeed, here it says that recipes controller index and it received order with unexpected arguments. So it's a very clear error message. Expected title as the arguments, but it actually got body as the argument. So indeed, our test is testing that we're sorting by title and not anything else. In this manner, you can test what data is being sent to the view without having to actually test the view itself. This is also very good because we're not reaching down into the model. Recipe is, in fact, the model. However, we're never calling any methods on it except for should receive. When we call order, it's being caught by the should receive, which is a stub in disguise, and it is also checking that the parameters are properly being passed, but it doesn't actually execute order. And we don't need it to because it doesn't matter if order is successful or fails. It just matters that it is called. And we can trust Active Record and the people that are programming Rails to make it work correctly. All right, well, that's it. We've very successfully put this index method under test and testing that it orders by title. Uh, you can write these kinds of tests for all of the actions in a controller very easily without having to reach into the view or the model. If you find yourself needing to reach into those places that you're not testing, it is an indication that your, your code may actually be written in, in such a way that it's very tightly coupled. Um, and that's another advantage of stubbing and mocking. If you find yourself stubbing uh, 10 things, for a test, then it probably is breaking the law of Demeter, um, meaning that it is reaching through too many things to, to do what it needs to do. Um, it may also mean that your method is too complex, uh, which is another uh, non-idiomatic Ruby or Rails um, style of coding. So that's it, um, RSpec mocking and stubbing. This has been Andrew Kofink. Thank you very much.